As soon as it coughs and catches, move the mixture control to automatic rich. Then turn off the booster pump long enough to be sure the engine-driven pump is operating. Oil pressure should be above 50 pounds and the oil temperature around 30 degrees before takeoff. During warm-up, the coolant temperature will rise more rapidly than the oil. On your right side are the controls for the coolant and oil shutters. Be sure they're open sufficiently. In warm weather like this, the coolant shutter should be opened all the way, while to keep the oil temperature even with the press zone, it need be opened only to the flush position. In colder weather, it would be almost fully closed. If everything is in good order and she's idling all right, you're about ready to taxi out to the runway. After calling the tower, be sure your doors are shut and latched. You'll be more comfortable with the windows fully closed. In this type of cockpit, it isn't necessary to wear goggles. Then set your trim tab. The recommended setting for the elevator is three or four graduations nose up, the rudder four graduations right rudder, and the aileron trim tab zero setting. Then release your brakes by depressing both brake pedals. For taxiing, you'll find that the P-39 requires only a small amount of throttle, between 1,000 and 1,200 RPM. To turn in close quarters or at slow speeds, you can get full swivel action in the nose wheel by the use of the main wheel brakes, and you'll be able to turn almost in your own stand. To prevent overheating, don't delay in getting out to takeoff position for a final engine check. You'll find that the plane has very good taxiing characteristics and that the brakes are very effective. You can taxi downwind, crosswind, or in any direction very easily. It is unnecessary to ride the brakes. At the end of the runway, call the tower and advise them that you're about to complete your final warm-up and check-off before flight. Set your brakes for the rev-up, then advance the throttle. Be sure the various pressures are okay and your temperature is low enough. Be very careful not to overheat. Check the magnetos at 2300 RPM. First, switch to right magneto, and the drop-off here should be maximum 100 RPM. Then switch to left, and the drop-off should be maximum 60 RPM. Then back to both, and the tack should climb back to 2300. To be sure the prop governor is functioning properly, pull it back. There should be a drop in RPM. Then push it forward to full low pitch for takeoff. Check the ammeter to see that the generator is working. It cuts in between 1300 and 1400 RPM. Finally, to be sure that everything is in good order, there's a checklist provided on the instrument panel. Refer to it and go over everything once more. Are your fuel tanks full? Is the selector valve on reserve? Prop governor, full forward and automatic rich on mixture. Fuel pressure up to 14 to 15 and a half pounds. Oil pressure up. Oil temperature okay. Coolant temperature okay. Suction up. And is your gearbox oil pressure okay? Now you're all set. Look around to be sure you're in the clear and then open your throttle smoothly. Remember that you have a lot of power pulling this plane and there'll be a lot of torque, so use full right rudder. You should have 3,000 RPM and 45 and a half inches of manifold pressure. As you gather speed, it will feel like any conventional plane. However, avoid a long run. When you have sufficient speed, 100 miles per hour, pull back gently and you'll lift off the ground quite suddenly. When you're safely off the ground, retract the landing gear. Keep an eye on the indicators to be sure they're coming up all right. When the wheels are fully retracted, the limit switches cut off the motor, the ammeter should drop back to normal. The landing gear indicators will be fully up and you can turn the switch to neutral.
When you're clear of all obstacles quartering the field and she feels all right, throttle back to normal climbing power. 37 and a half inches of manifold pressure with the prop governor at 2,600 RPM. Your airspeed indicator should show about 160 miles per hour. No turns should be attempted at less than 150 miles per hour. As you change RPM and power and as your speed increases, you'll want to adjust your trim tab. During the climb, watch your operating temperature. At 160 miles per hour, your best climbing speed, cooling is the most critical. Be sure your coolant shutter is open sufficiently to keep the engine temperature down. When you reach a safe altitude, level off. Throttle back to 30 inches of manifold pressure and pull the prop governor back to 2280 RPM. Depending on the temperature of the air, the coolant shutter should be adjusted for proper cooling of the engine. In extremely hot weather or in tropical climates, they should be kept pretty well open, somewhere between flush and full open. You'll find that the P-39 has excellent visibility in all directions, forward, rearward, above, and on either side. Referring to the checklist once more, be sure that everything is functioning properly that the fuel and oil pressures are up, and that the temperatures are up. Then, with everything operating smoothly, give some attention to the characteristics of your controls. You'll find that they are sensitive and respond nicely. Then try a few turns to see how she handles. Landing gear and flaps retracted, try a stall. Ease back gently on the stick, keeping the nose slightly above the horizon. You'll find that in this condition, the stalling speed is about 105 miles per hour. Ease the stick forward, and be sure you build your air speed up sufficiently to completely unstall your wing, at least 140 miles per hour before leveling off. Then take it back up to a safe altitude again and try another stall. Only this time have the landing gear and flaps extended. It'll give you a good chance to study the plane's stalling characteristics and the landing condition before you bring her in for the first time. Since you're going to extend your landing gear, you might try the manual operation. Be sure the landing gear electrical switch is in the neutral position, and then change the clutch handle to the manual position. To firmly engage it, switch the ratchet ball to up and crank to retract the gear. This will bring the clutch handle fully to the manual position. Then change the ball to down and start cranking. Because you'll be pulling against the pressure of the slipstream, keep your airspeed below 140 miles per hour so you won't have to put so much weight behind it. With your landing gear extended, lower your flap and then try another stall. In this condition, you'll find that your stalling speed will be about 95 miles per hour. To retract the landing gear, change the clutch back to the electric position and retract the gear with the electric motor drive. Retract the flaps as well, but be sure you put the landing gear and the flap switches back to the neutral position when they're fully retracted. that in either condition, the stall is gentle and there is no pronounced tendency for the plane to fall off on either wing. And now you should be pretty well acquainted with the basic handling qualities and general flight characteristics. Before shooting your first landing, you might give her the gun and see how she works. Now 
while you've had a good workout and have gotten the feel of her pretty well. Let's bring her in for a landing. refer to your checklist again. You'll find it helpful. Switch the fuel selector valve to the reserve or right tank, depending upon which one has the most fuel, and throttle back to about 15 inches of manifold pressure. Push the prop governor up to about 2,600 RPM. When your airspeed has dropped to less than 200 miles per hour, the landing gear can be extended. Keep an eye on the indicators. When the wheels are fully extended, the pop-up indicator on the nose cowling and one in each wing panel will be visible. The travel indicator will be down and the ammeter should read normal. In making your approach, you will find that with the P-39's excellent visibility in all directions, you will not have to make a close turn to keep track of other traffic in the air. You can come straight in if you want to. Keep your speed up sufficiently until you're beyond all obstacles bordering the airport. When your speed is about 140 miles per hour, lower the flat. Glance at the indicator to be sure the flaps are pulled down. Use your elevator trim tab to lighten the stick forces due to the change in trim with the gear and flaps extended. Now remember, you'll be bringing this plane in for the first time. It's only natural that you won't be fully accustomed to it and perhaps a little uncertain. But don't forget your traffic regulations. Don't make a right turn instead of a left into the airport. Just take it easy and establish a steady glide. Be careful not to come in too fast. If you're not quite straight with the runway and you find that you're not going to be able to set her down on the first third of the runway, don't be afraid to take her around again. It's much better and safer to make a good landing on the second or even the third try than to bring her in for a bad landing the first time. In going around again, don't forget your flat. On your next try, be careful to make a wide enough turn coming in so as not to crowd yourself. Get lined up with the runway early. Then you can concentrate on maintaining a proper approaching airspeed. Now your approach is steady and you're lined up with a runway, but you're still coming in a little too fast. You haven't broken your speed sufficiently to make a tail low landing on the first third of the runway. You will land on three wheels, fast and a little rough. There's no great hazard coming in fast on three wheels, but it may be hard on the equipment and it'll require either a very long landing run or excessive use of the brakes. Now let's try it once more, only a little slower this time. Continue in a normal gliding approach and forget that you have a tricycle landing gear. Make a conventional tail low landing. It's practically impossible to get your tail low enough to drag it on the runway. It's for this reason that a tail skid is not installed. In slow motion, your landing should look something like this. You should contact the ground at about 95 miles per hour. Keep the stick well back and hold the nose wheel off the ground as long as possible. The plane will slow down quite rapidly in this attitude without the use of brakes. When you apply your brakes, the nose wheel will come down. There's absolutely no danger of nosing over, no matter how hard you apply the brakes. However, the brakes are powerful enough to lock the main wheels and burn out a tire. Use them intermittently. When you taxi back from the runway, open your coolant shutters to keep the engine from overheating. Bring your flaps up. 
But remember, the flaps, not your landing gear. Then bring her in and park her. To shut off the engine, pull the mixture control back to idle cutoff and advance your throttle slightly. When the engine is stopped, turn off your ignition switch, then your battery and generator switches. The flap and landing gear switches should be put in the neutral position. Then turn off your radio receiver and transmitter. Well, that's the story, Lieutenant. She's all yours. Remember, fellows, this plane handles much like any other. It's not a hot landing ship, but it is fast, and it may respond a little quicker than you're accustomed to. Just take it easy until you get the feel of the control. You'll find that you'll get along very well together. As a team, you and this plane have an important job to do in winning this war. <laughs>